How do I want to intro Kyle Hamilton? Um, First round pick? No, uh, let's do something random. Hamilton. Um, descendant of Alexander. Descendant of Alexander. How about I intro you? Ah, it kind of takes away from it. Yeah, yeah, it's three, four, four. All right, okay, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready. And it's intercepted by Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey is without a doubt in the conversation to be the best corner in football. <laughs>What's up, guys? We are here with Kyle Hamilton, the Baltimore Ravens' first round pick, number 14 overall. I'm excited to welcome this guy because he's the first rookie, but how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great. As I did my homework on you, mm -hmm. I started seeing a lot of similar characteristics, and it started with high school. So I was, I was a little torn. I saw a little four-star and a little five-star. Which, which one did you... Do you claim, or were you in high school football? Um, I claim, uh, I like to claim like a three star, honestly. Three star. Because I was, funny thing about my. So we're not similar at all. Yeah. <laughs> I was a five, so that. Yeah, I, you, were, I you were him, yeah, and I was just sorry, a, sorry. another dude. But no, so I had never gone to a football camp before my sophomore year, summer, going into my junior year. Um, I was a hooper up until that point. Um, so I was, I was lit to get three-star rating. I was like, wow, I'm actually on a website. Um, my dad played, everybody in my family played basketball. So uh, fun, fun fact, I was actually about to quit football. Whoa. After my sophomore year, had a few basketball options. And at the time, I was probably 6'1", like 140, like soaking wet. And uh, my mom was like, didn't even want me to play my sophomore year of football because she didn't want me to get hurt. Begged her to play. Uh, let me play, thankfully, and then my high school football coach was, has like 300 wins, like super old guy, very intimidating, so I was scared to go to him after the season to quit. And so I waited a week, kind of put it off, and then FAU came and offered me, I originally thought it was for basketball, but he was like, no, I'm the football coach. And I was like, okay, and then Louisville offered me uh, that same week, so I was like, all right, well, I've always loved football, football really more than basketball, so I guess I'll just I'll just stick with it. I'm here now. So why, so you were you were scared to you were scared to quit football? Yeah, I'm scared. So basketball was kind of your first love, or like why why were you even playing football at all? Just kind of good at? It? Yeah, I mean I was always good. Um, at the time I didn't know I was like college good or NFL good. Um, but yeah, my pops played professionally for like 13 years, played basketball. My brother played in college. My uncles, cousins, everybody played basketball. Everybody um, wasn't really a football player in the family. So I just thought from a young age, like this is the path you go down, just hoop and then hoop in college and take that wherever you can. But I was different. Did, how did family feel with you playing ba like football over basketball? Or did they not really care? Surprisingly, my mom was more against it than my dad. Um, because my dad's seen me from a young age be good at both, and he always knew that I, I like football more. Um, basketball just got burnt out with it, with AAU and all that stuff from a young age, and football was kind of release um, in terms of the basketball stuff. But he was supportive. Everybody was really supportive of, supportive of it. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I was going to school for free, so I mean, can't complain. So I've, there's always everybody in the NFL thinks they can hoop. Would you, like, if we go into the locker room, are you claiming to be the best hooper on the team, or? I know that for a fact, for, probably. For a fact? Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Okay, we're, 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 that's going to happen in the locker room. We're going to say that goes. <laughs> we got a court here, but can't get too crazy. But, um, so how was it, I know your dad played in the pros. Mm. Was there, were you alive all, at times when he was playing, or how did that work? I was born in Greece, actually, because of that. Um, Crete, Greece, little island off the southern coast. Um, so he was playing. Over there, he went to college at Southern Miss. He's from Mobile. Um, went to college at Southern Miss. Was actually sweet mates with Brett Favre when he was there. He told me some funny Brett Favre stories. Probably can't uh, repeat them. I but I was going to say, that would be <laughs> if you want to share. I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> no, I'm going I'm to keep that between us. But And then he went overseas. Was in Italy, Israel, Russia, Spain, Philippines. And uh, I was only in Italy, Israel, and Russia. And then came to the States and Greece, so, obviously. So he, was, he bounced around a lot. Yep. How was it, how old were you when he was doing all that? Um, I don't remember any of it. My brother does. He's four and a half years older than me, but we came to the States when I was three. When you and your brother talk about that, how does, how does he kind of remember when he's playing professional? Um, 
he thought it was cool, like kids at school, stuff like that. Um, moving around, my brother would like, he went, went, I think we were in Israel and he was going to like the English primary school. So he would come home and say like trousers and like pick up on like English slang. And like, he would kind of adapt to different cultures we went to and from, but, um, but he thought it was really cool. I mean, it's cool to have that perspective from a young age, being a professional athlete. My dad played um, for Denver and Miami, but I was, I don't remember any, actually I, I wasn't even alive, but it was always, I don't know if you ever got this, but for me it was always, oh, you're Bobby's son, you're Bobby's son. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's, that's how. Definitely, yeah. At AU tournaments, like random people come to me, oh, you're Ham's son. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know who you are. You're <laughs> talking about my dad, but yeah, he's, his, uh, his name carries a little weight, I would say. Yeah, so did you ever feel like, I know me growing up, it was, I didn't really feel pressure, but my older brother went to Arkansas full ride. My dad played in the pros. So there was always kind of a, an expectation kind of mm -hmm. there. And it was almost something you had to like grow out of to where it wasn't, oh, you're Bobby's son. Oh, you're Dreek's brother. It's, oh, you're Marlon, this guy. Did yeah. you ever feel like, how was that for you? Obviously you did it, you're here. How did you kind of grow out of those shadows? Yeah, like you said, it was pressure, but at the same time, I feel like it was competition, like within the family. Um, like I said, my uncles, cousins, everybody played. My brother, growing up seeing him, he played at UPenn. Um, so, and the Ivies played at a good academic school and obviously played basketball at a college level. And um, growing up seeing that, I was like, I want to be that, but even better. Um, being the younger brother, you're always kind of like, uh, on the coattails a little bit, um, doing all the stuff that you don't want to do, but it kind of creates something inside you, like I can do this and I know what I'm capable of. And I think that definitely helped me get here. And so I was doing my research. I saw, I had to look this up last night, Mensa. <laughs> yeah. So you're supposed to be a scientist. You're supposed to be this really smart Einstein guy. I wanted to be an architect actually, you but I know architecture and football, college football was not you still happen. could be an architect. I could down the road. I wouldn't want you to let me design your house right now, but give me some schooling and I definitely could. I mean, honestly, I've, I've had some bad house. I mean, I, I built a house, mm -hmm. tore the house down. So that didn't go well. That could have been you. You could have gave me a pretty bad and I just, but hopefully that doesn't happen, but maybe, maybe <laughs> one day. But tell me, tell me about that. Yeah, my mom, typical Korean mom, <laughs> was uh, on us from the jump about school. like. Can't go to practice unless your homework's finished. Can't stay up past this amount of time. Got to have your work done for do everything issue. So I always say, do what you have to do before you do what you want to do. And that really stuck with me. Um, she definitely had a bunch of those little little nuggets that I kept. But, but uh, no, nah, it was always school first. And that was a big reason why I chose Notre Dame. Because, I mean, it's a privilege to be here, a privilege to play football. But you never know when it can end. And having that Notre Dame background, my brother having an Ivy League background, um, that's almost a, just as satisfying as saying, like, I played collegiate football. It's like I went to a great university that has great connections. So you were all, all A guy? Uh, in high school, pre-offers. And then the offers started coming in. You know it is. It's like, that's some so you started, started slacking? To Not slacking, but it's, it's like. Pre-offer? You started. Some bees started trickling in. Oh, and, man. And then, so you let it get to your head. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I think I just... Did uh, your mom get this? I thought she was pushing you and that she... She was. I knew my bread was better, though. Okay. Man, nah, I'm a little disappointed at that. That was bad advice to the kids. You, <laughs> oh, man. Like, no, I, I did get on my right. ACT, though, and all that stuff. And what was ACT? 30. It goes up to 36? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I had a uh, 35. Okay. Um... Minus a couple yeah. points. <laughs> Minus a couple points. But once I got the minimum, I you was chilling. Good. Yeah. I was good. Anyway, I I could have done better. <laughs> I did go back when I went back to school. Matter of fact, let's talk about you going back to school. Yeah. You left early. Yeah, I did. What is your plan for going back? I need to. I have to. That was like I said. Do you want to talk reason. about dedication? Do I want to talk about dedication? I took classes during the football season. See, I can't do that. Notre Dame needs you in class. Jerome Bettis. Was wow. in class this semester, this past semester, with like twenty year olds taking like. You want to talk about more dedication? First two off seasons in the league, in you class, back. two times, graduated. So um, I need to make that decision. I, I became more dedicated after the fact, because I really wanted. The diploma does mean something to me as well. I think we all want to play for 
ever. Mm-hmm. But even if you do play forever, eventually, right, you kind of got to do unless you just want to just kind of do nothing, which is no fun. But I think uh, if I was giving advice, it was a great feeling to get my diploma, and it sounds like you went to Notre Dame to get that diploma. So that's that's what I would offer. Talk to me about Notre Dame. I know that's a legendary school, not only for academics but in sports. Mm. How was it kind of wearing, what was that, gold, shiny gold? How was that? 23.9 karat gold, to be exact, on the helmet. Fun fact. Um, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> a little recruiting pitch. But, no, it was, for me personally, it was down to Georgia and Notre Dame. Obviously, two very different schools. Georgia pr- yeah. probably would have been the easier choice. Come from Georgia, knew a lot of people there. Um, playing the SEC, probably going to have a little more fun than Athens than South Bend, Indiana. But, um that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. Kind of wanted to get out the South, experience something new. Um, got to meet a lot of cool people, um, not even just teammates. Like people at Notre Dame, even though they may be affluent, like the coolest people you'll ever meet, and you won't and will never know that. And these are connections like I'll have forever. Um, but it was different. It was different. It was um, we couldn't room with a football player freshman yeah, year. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. ask. I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. So in the middle of the summer, we're all um, doing workouts or whatever freshman year, and then we get an email dorm assignment and roommate assignment. So you could have gotten a dorm with AC, new dorm, or you get a dorm that was built in 1878, no AC, with a quad and then a 20 by 20 room with four dudes in it, bunked up. And four dudes in one room? One room, one room. No doors, no none of that, one sink, communal ba- bathroom. Community bathroom. Mm-hmm. So it's, okay. it's a grind, but I mean, that's what makes it special at the same time. It's just you got to decide whether you want to do that or not. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't really relate. Actually, <laughs> when I was younger, I guess we had, my dad was very uh, advanced in like building stuff. My mom used to call him Bob the Builder from the little <laughs> cartoon show. That's but funny. I guess we complained a lot. So we had uh, upstairs, we had a living room upstairs and then three beds, five kids. I guess we were doing so much complaining that my dad got tired of it, built a wall in the living room and made two bedrooms. That's a good dad. That's a great dad. dad. So hearing you stay with one, two, three, four would be very not used to for me. These are random people. Like you you get your roommate assignment, you're going to Instagram, like Twitter, like Googling them, trying to figure out what they're like, what they don't like. Like some dudes will have their best friends forever meet them randomly in their roommates. Some dudes will come in and not talk for a whole year because you got to do that for a year and then you can pick your roommate to your sophomore year. You can't move off till your senior year. And you only went three years. So you was in there the whole time. Uh, see, NIL. Ah, <laughs> uh, you came here uh, rich. You we, don't even need your contract. We, we finessed a little bit. We finessed a little uh, bit. Matter of fact, talking about the NIL because we, you know, back in my day, <laughs> What, I was, five years ago, you know, I was eating with my with my girl. Car get declined. I got to call my mom. So it, times have really changed. How did the how do you think the NIL has affected you, and how do you see the NIL going in the future? For me personally, it was cool to kind of because I knew the NFL was coming up. So I mean, money's involved as well in that scenario. So kind of get a taste of that financial management stuff like that, investments, all that. But. For me, I made sure it wasn't a distraction from football. I got all my stuff set up in the summer going in and then kept my, my mom works for a marketing company. My brother works in marketing right now. So I was like, why hire somebody when I have people around me in my circle who can deal with it? So chose them to kind of help me and represent me in that area. And that way everybody eats. So that was pretty cool in that sense. But like I said, now it's kind of it's, it's almost turned into like pay to play in college, like free agency. So especially with the free transfer rule, it's kind of crazy. But I think overall, it's a good thing. Yeah, I think I, I like that guys can just make money off their name. I mm-hmm. think it, it's a really good thing. I just it's just crazy how it, it's really gotten a free for all. And it's almost like who's paying the most. And but it, but it's been I think it's been really good. It's been really good to see guys that I mean, some guys play really well in college and it doesn't translate to the next level. Right. Um, like undersized guys and. You know, so I think it's been really good. But back to Northern Dame, let's talk about Northern Dame success with the college football playoff. This Black might Oaks. this might be a might be a yeah 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 yeah. I I, mean, I, I just want to 
What do you think, <laughs> what playoff prep, post postseason prep, what, what's kind of the thing? Why do you think that's kind of been the lack thereof? Um, I think it has something a little bit to do with the mentality, mentality around Notre Dame at times. Um, because we play teams like Alabama, we play teams like Clemson. Um, and these are obviously blue bloods when we belong in that conversation. But I just feel like at times around Notre Dame, it got to be like, like, damn, I hope we win the game. Not like, mm. not like we put our pants on the we're same way. To. We're about to go like win the game. And um, I think that hurts us at times because even this year, and I didn't play in the bowl game, but we were in the Fiesta Bowl, which is New Year's Six Bowl. We were up like 21. And I kind of felt like, we like let our foot off the gas a little bit, but no, no discredit to the guys that are playing, but like it's just, we haven't been in that situation before. We haven't been up in a New Year's Six Bowl game. So we just gotta learn how to play like that. And I'm sure the guys are capable of doing so, and we will, we have a new coach and um, some new light being shined on the program. But um, I'm gonna sound kind of weird by saying this, but we lost by less than the loser in the national championship both times. You can go back and check that. So we lost to Clemson by 27, when I wasn't there, my senior year of high school. And then we lost to Bama by like seven, 17, I think. And, uh, and then they smashed Ohio State. So I guess we'll, we'll take is, third that, place. That is, that is yeah. an okay flex. Yeah. That's an okay flex. You talked about not playing in your bowl game. You opted out for the combine and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I know you went to the combine. Did scouts and like team, did they mess with you about that? About Notre Dame success? About, about you opting not out. opting out. Uh, yeah, for sure. And it, you know how it is. You've been I know, through the I process. So it's, like, it's like, so you just don't care about your team? That's right. <laughs> it's like, you know the answer to that. But my answer was just like, I've done everything I could for these past three years. Been a dream of mine to play in the NFL. I feel like I provided myself and my family with a good opportunity. You can tell I've rehearsed this. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I felt like it was time for me to go. And I told all my teammates, that, cause I was coming off an injury at the time, um, sprained my MCL halfway through the season. I got cleared before the bowl game. And I said, if we're going to the playoff, I'm going to play. If we're not, then I'm not going to play. And turns out we didn't go to the playoff. So told everybody on the team, um, me and my boy Kyron, who also opted out, plays running back, told everybody we're not playing and everybody within the building was cool with it. So like, we have a great season, go to the playoffs. There wouldn't be like a, if we make it to the Super Bowl, I'll play. Like that, that wouldn't just making. I'm depends. Just, depends. Yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no, nah, I'm playing. Of course, okay. I'm playing. I'm just just <laughs> want to make sure who, who we got here on the team. Yeah, no, no. So, um, you talked about um, Northern Dame. Um, I know it's just. I think anybody that goes to like a legendary school, there's there's so many memories you take from a place, whether it's plays you made. What's well, something that you'll miss the most about that place? Definitely. I'm sure you say the same thing, like just dudes in the locker room, like because yeah. and at this level, it's different from college because like I was living with three of my boys who um going to do a little plug. Actually, have a podcast around. You need to come on. Um, Where to go. Nice. Uh, What's the podcast called? Inside the Garage. Inside the Garage. We had a garage in our About townhouse and okay. I'm not going to go on that tangent, but um yeah, guys in the locker room, playing video games with them, hanging out with them, going to the functions or whatever with them. And um, that's definitely one thing I miss the most about school. What was your favorite play you made at Northern Day? Do you have one? Favorite play well, I you made. You had a very nice play. I'd probably say, yeah, the pick against Florida State. Oh, okay, all right, that's yeah. what I'm, yeah, you got some range. No, I take that back. Some range. Take that back. First play ever in Notre Dame Stadium, my freshman year, I got a pick six. Your first play ever? First play. Uh, we played Louisville the week before at Louisville. Oh, first one in Notre Dame. Yeah, first one in Notre Dame Stadium. I got pick six. That was pretty dope. That was dope. And Dalen, kind of Dalen, shout out Dalen Hayes, was um, Dalen tipped the pass, and I caught it. So it was scored. the Dalen play mainly? Yeah, Dalen okay. made the play, and then I just capped it off. But, um, you but stole his, okay, I yeah, stole I his you. shine. Gotcha. Uh, you got the shine at the end. That's all that really – I mean, I, I didn't have two – Fumble pickup, fumble pickup. Yeah, I don't care about career. Dalen. I mean, he's just doing his just job. Pick up the fumble, I just <laughs> score, and then I'm the man. You know, it's, it's cool. It's cool. But he came in the end zone, celebrated, jumped up. He knocked me on the ground. Like, it's, it's on video somewhere. But, yeah, that was pretty dope. What was your favorite play ever, college and NFL? <sighs> High school, Little League. Man. I'd have to go. I didn't really do anything. 
similar to you, but it was probably uh, um, I just caught an onside kick in the championship, and it was just uh, it was just funny the way it all set up. So we practice this onside kick every week. We do like a little pooch kick. Probably what I don't know how long college is. What eleven weeks? Who's this against Clemson? Clemson. Okay. I drop the onside kick every single week, just about <laughs> every single time. So I'm like probably never going to call this because I mess it up all the time. And surprisingly, Saban didn't really, he didn't get mad at yeah, me. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't take you off hands. Yeah, he, he never took me off, which is really surprising. Yeah. I, I mean, my hands are a little suspect anyway, but <laughs> so we're playing the championship, crazy game. Sean Watson's going crazy. We're battling and we're about to do normal kickoff and they run to me and they're like, don't freak out, don't freak out. We're about to do the onside kick. And I never stood in the huddle because I was just a safety. Yeah. So them running to me and like causing this uproar was, if anyone was paying attention, they would have been like, something's about to happen. Right. But anyway, Griff, Adam Griffith, I think that's how you say his name, mm -hmm. kicks it. I just catch it. Be going to win championship. And I felt like that and Kenyon Drake's like 90 something yard kickoff return. Yeah. Were like two pivotal plays because it was so hard to stop Deshaun. Yeah, watching at the time. I, I was he, watching that game. Was, all right, let's talk about Notre Dame career. They say you play, I have not watched enough tape on you. They say you play all over the field. Why, how does that, how did that come up? Like, when did they realize, like, I think this Kyle guy can be here. I think he can be here. I think he can be here. Yeah, um, I think obviously just my size, given how big I am for the position, um, provides a little flexibility, and I feel like I move, move well with my size. So whether that's being in the slot or playing the post or coming down and covering Mark or something. Um, I feel like I can do all those things. But at school, um, Aloe Gilman, Jalen Elliott, two safety captains, they were in front of me. So I was pretty much just coming and playing third down, like nickel, um, dime, um, my freshman year. But after they left, we lost, lost a lot of people in the secondary. So at that point, I told the coach, I was like, if I need to play post, will, um, nickel, like whatever, just use me as need be. And kind of stuck. Um, Playbook wise, it was kind of tough to get everything down, but I, I got a good grasp of it and, and continued it this past year. So hopefully I can do that at some capacity at this level, but I know it's going to be harder, but I'm excited. Getting in the box, you got to be pretty physical to get in there. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? Joe Mixon over there at the Bengals, Najee Harris yeah. at the Steelers, <laughs> Nick Chubb at the Browns. Because right, right. you know a lot, you know, they say, Oh man, Kyle Hamilton. Oh, he's crazy, it's man. Be a little harder. Yeah. That's what they, that's what they yeah. telling me, like, man, he couldn't pass this guy. And I'm, you know, so I'm, I'm like, okay, okay, I'll see him. <laughs> and you got here, and I'm, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm always, you know, when I'm a rookie, as, me up as when I was a first rounder, <laughs> people are looking at me, like, trying me. They're kind of yeah. like, can this guy play ball? And I'm looking at you, I'm like, you're kind of thin. Mm -hmm. Not thin. But kind of thin. thin. You're pretty thin. The thinner side. So obviously you play with a lot more funk. Well, maybe funk isn't the right word, but you know what I mean. Maybe you play with funk. a lot more. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously. What kind of get, and you seem a very calm guy. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're a different beast on the field than you are just walking around every day. What kind of, what gets you going? I would say just the preparation. Like this is the most rewarding thing in the world, in my opinion, football, because you know how much we go through on a daily basis, yep. the grind, like, why not go out there and try to be the beast that you know you can be, and that's what kind of got me going, especially in Notre Dame, like, I know dudes were looking at me to be that spark plug, and so if that's a big hit, or if that's a pick, or if that's a check being made that was tough the week throughout practice, like, just giving other dudes confidence, that's kind of what gave me my push to keep going, and like, like you said, in the box, you just got to have a different mentality. Yeah, like the mentality. In college, I was, uh, I forgot who, it was A.J. Dillon. He played Boston College. Big dude, obviously. Big dude. And um, before the game, everybody was saying, like, because they had a backup running back, it was 250 as well. And then before the game, everybody was saying, like, yo, like, be ready, like, bring your big boy pants, this and that. And I'm like, I'm just in the hotel on Friday night. And this kind of changed my whole outlook on tackling. I'm like, I'm not going to die. Like, <laughs> that's how I approach it now. So I'm like, I'm just going to throw my body in there. Might hurt a little bit, but I, I most likely will be ready for the next play. So if, and if a running back feels that from a DB, they're kind of like, okay, like, I'm not going to try him like how I would somebody else. So kind of trying to gain that respect. 
Um, obviously, you win some, you lose some. But, I mean, I'm willing to lose some to win the others. That mentality gets you to draft night. I know you went to the comp. I mean, went to the draft. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy? Because I had a similar situation. Did you go to the draft? I did not. Where was it? It was. Honestly, I don't remember where That's the draft not been was. Very memorable. But, but I didn't go. Because I just felt like there was a lot that you had to do there. Yeah, for sure. Is that true? I don't really, I've never even talked to him about that, actually. Is that true? Were you, like, doing this and this and Old Spice and this and this and this? Yeah, definitely. And the draft was on Thursday. I had to get out there Monday. And it's in Vegas, so I was there from Monday to Friday. And that's a long time in Vegas. That's a year in Vegas. And so my family got there Tuesday, but I didn't really even see them, for real, up until Thursday. Because I was just working all day long, and then my friends were there, so, like, we would do stuff at night. But, um... It was a fun experience for sure, especially being in Vegas. I don't know if it was somewhere else I, I would have gone, but um, being in Vegas, like, I definitely had to go to that for sure. What is it like getting a call that you're going to get, that you're going to be drafted at 14 overall? It was surreal. Like, I've said this before, like, I looked down at my phone, and it's kind of funny in the green room, like, the first few picks, like, you know who's going. Like, yeah. So, like, when, like, Aiden goes to Detroit or, like, um, like Sauce goes to the Jets at four, like, everybody's still in the room, like, oh, yeah, congrats. Like, everybody's clapping. Wait, oh, okay, great room. Okay. Yeah, and so, but, like, once he gets to, like, seven, eight, nine, like, everybody's just, you can hear a pin drop. <laughs> it's so weird, and then you're just sitting there, and all of a sudden you hear a family clapping, and everybody's like, uh, congrats like to congrats them. to them, congrats yeah. To them. So it's it's a little weird. It's a little funny at the same time. I wasn't really stressing it that much because I knew that like going into the draft, I'm like I'm gonna be drafted in the first round of NFL draft. Like although like you work so hard to go as high as you can, like that's been a dream since I was five years old. Like what are you really complaining about at the end of the day? But um, it was cool. Like getting the call, being able to share that moment with my family, like it just encompassed everything that I've ever worked for and that they've sacrificed for me. So. That was definitely a special moment. Did you have any team that you thought you would go to? Um, honestly, with me, it was like anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. It was what I was hearing before the draft was like, and what my people were talking about was like 7 to 14. And luckily 14 was Baltimore. I feel like it was like, and everybody's like, oh, like you fell, like stuff in that. But one, like I play safety and like it's just, it is what it is with the, the way the draft falls with it. But two, like, I go to Baltimore, like, one of the best franchises in the NFL. Like, you get to start a franchise. And no offense to the people who were picking earlier, but, like, obviously they're picking early for a reason. And you get to go to a franchise who's been there, who's done that, got guys like you, like Lamar, like, and, like, immediately in contention with a Super Bowl. So um, be able to learn from a great organization, it's like the perfect storm for me. <laughs> Ed Reed gives you a call on draft night. Uh-huh. Now, if there's one thing I'm sure you do know, you haven't really been to a game yet, I don't think, with Baltimore. No, I have not. But you're going to see two jerseys a lot, Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Fair. Ed Reed did not call me when I got drafted. I'm not a safety, so I'm not taking any beef. But <laughs> how was it to get that call? It was dope. I mean, he's obviously the best ever. I'm a Sean Taylor guy, too. So one, two best ever safeties to ever play a game. And it's like, this is the pinnacle of what I'm trying to get at. So... As much as I can pick his brain or just understand not even just football stuff, just like his process, like mentally, how he cause performed at this level for so long. Um, but like after I got drafted, like, you know, you do media right after. Um, within 30 minutes, I was asked about Ed Reed like 40 times. So I was like, OK, like this has already become a thing. But I, I talked to him on that call about that. And he was kind of like, be your own man. like. Ed Reed's going to be Ed Reed, Kyle Hamilton's going to be Kyle Hamilton. So that really stuck with me at the same time. It's just be you, do what you can do. Um, there's going to be a bunch of comparisons out there, noise and all that. And you know that with the media. So um, no offense to the media. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, he's dropped some nuggets um, for sure. And I think that's what's the best part about this NFL thing. Like you have all the resources in front of you. Like literally you can be connected with anybody. Um, who can give you great information. It's just up to whether you want to do it or not. And I feel like I'm definitely going to take advantage of that. So you get drafted here. You look at the secondary. I mean, me, you got Marcus Peters, a couple Pro Bowls. Marcus Williams just signed a big deal. Chuck Clark, 
It's kind of run the defense for a while. Tony Jefferson, uh, just on Kyle Fuller, a couple of Pro Bowls. Mm-hmm. You look at a crazy room. What kind of – it's all about earning your stripes in the league. That's one thing that I've – when I when I got drafted, it was, it was kind of in a unique situation. I remember we had Jimmy Smith, who had mm-hmm. – I mean, longtime Raven, game-winning play in the Super Bowl. Brandon Carr had just signed a deal. Tavon Young had just come off – Rookie year starting, I'm kind of sitting there like, I don't really feel like they really needed me yeah. specifically. There wasn't a positional need, which the Ravens are known for just drafting the best available player. Mm-hmm. How do you kind of see your fit or what kind of do you just plan on doing to get on the field? Yeah, I feel like it's an everyday thing um, and just little things at the same time. Like you said, gaining respect, I think, is huge at this level because you're playing with grown men who've been here. And your first round, you come in, it's like, who are you, kind of. Um, but I try to just stay humble, keep a humble approach, um, keep my head down, just keep working. You know, I'm going to make mistakes and practice, stuff like that, but just try not to make the same mistakes. Communicate. Coaches are getting me big, getting on me uh, a lot about that right now, communicating. So just try to do everything I can, just little stuff like that. And hopefully, once we get closer to season, camp, uh, preseason, it all comes together. And then at that point, hopefully, earn some playing time. and. Um, but whether that be on special teams, like wherever is needed, I'm, I'm excited to do so. That's kind of how I was. I was like, I, I don't really care where I play. Right, yeah, um, just give me on the field. Just give, give me on the field anyway. Yeah. I think I look back on my rookie year, it was, I didn't play, I didn't play much, but I learned so much. Mm. Um, just sitting in the rooms with Eric Weddle at the time, it was just crazy. Like. I just remember sitting with me and Chuck as like two rookies that just got drafted. And it was just so much knowledge comes in from from the different vets mm-hmm. um, uh, that, that you'll talk to if you haven't already. But there's just so much knowledge and um, different guys you meet and different things. And then as as season goes on, end up starting like the last four games. And it just it just you just put your head down, get to work. I was I was never trying to overstep. Um, yeah, for sure. Any vet, I for think sure. they threw away my shoes. <laughs> what? It was, like it was, a it was a long, yeah, it's a long story. I walk in, they're standing over the trash can, just looking at my shoes, and I'm just like, "What's?" I mean, you can't say anything though. It was, it was a. There was a reason why it, they was like, "Bro, what are you doing with these?" I was like, yeah, "You know, like, it's college." <laughs> you know? So it's uh, it's fun. There's there's no there's no crazy rookie hazing here, so you'll you'll yeah. be good. But do you, do you miss being a rookie? Are you like being a vet? How does it feel to be a vet? Man, it's weird because. It goes so fast, actually. Like, really? it doesn't seem like I'm a vet, but... People say that. It's so hard I to, am. Like, understand, though, You know, it's, being a rookie. It's like. just like you turn into a vet so quick. Like, mm. at one point, you're going into a game, and I, I remember it. Like, I remember kind of when people kind of really kind of knew who I was somewhat. I mean, we actually got killed that game. But <laughs> it was against the Browns, and I just remember... Actually, Jimmy Smith called me. He's like... Bro, it's gonna be it's gonna be big tomorrow. Like you're playing OBJ, the Browns. You're matching up the entire game, following them everywhere. And I just remember sitting there in the hotel room the night before the game, and I'm like, I feel like I can make a name for myself off this guy. Yeah. And so now that narrative is like switched, and it's like it's kind of what Harbs was saying today. Mm-hmm. What, what Ray Lewis said to him, it's like if I run Ray, Lewis, if a running back rookie running back runs Ray Lewis over, they're like. I just ran Ray Lewis over. Yeah. Like, I just caught a pass on Ray Lewis. So every day you got to – it's like you have to work even harder to, to stay where you're at. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's basically being a vet in this league. You, get, you earn that respect. Like, it was an honor for me, for different guys, like, to be like, yo, what's up, Rook, man? I really like your game. And I'm just like, damn, this dude knows who I am. Yeah, it's like, crazy. Richard, Richard yeah. Sherman knows who I am. Yeah. And so once you start doing those type of things, like – it just becomes such an honor kind of to, to mm-hmm. wear the shield, wear, wear, wear the Ravens. And that's kind of the difference now with, like, being a vet. You go up to, like, young guys, you're like, bro, I really like your game. You're like, yeah. I, I really like this. Like, Denzel Ward's are, he's, like, only a year younger than me, I think. But I'm like, bro, I really like your game. You talk to this guy, you talk to this guy. And so it's, it's, it's just different. But the best thing when you're a vet, you're in such a routine. Like, you know yeah. what – really is your schedule. I think when I was a rookie, I just remember having so much time. Like, I'm like, dang, bro, like we have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want to go downtown Baltimore, see how it's going. 
And then like week four comes around, you're like, bro, I'm so tired. Cause right. that rookie wall hits. Yeah, and everybody's it, been talking about that. Rookie year, man, it's, it's, it's definitely a thrill. These long days, they start to pay off. And uh, you just soak it all up and you kind of just go from there. But I want to ask two more questions. Mm -hmm. One question is, what is something very memorable to you that a coach has said to you just throughout your whole whole career that, that stuck with you? Yep. Um, Terry Joseph was safety's coach at Notre Dame for my two year, or for the first two years I was there. He's now safety's coach at Texas. Um, when I came in, uh, I was a five star when I got there. So obviously very hard on me. Um, everybody was. And one thing he told me was, don't be too cool. And that definitely stuck with me because be too cool. Yeah, you you see a lot of guys who are just like too cool to like run to the ball or too cool to make a call because um, I kind of feel like they made it or something like that. But I feel like I've kind of carried that with me even when I was All American, whatever, at Notre Dame my junior year. Like, it's still you got to double down on it. Kind of like being a vet, like you said, um, on a smaller scale, obviously in college. But guys are looking at you like I'm gonna not run the ball because Kyle's not running the ball. Like, why do I have to run the ball? So you never know who's watching. Um, but yeah, I would say don't be too cool. That's one good advice I got. And then confidence is everything, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and any, no matter what you're doing, obviously you've instilled a lot of confidence. What is confidence to Kyle Hamilton? I would say conf confidence to me is just preparation and knowing how good I am in the least narcissistic way I can say that. Um, but I know I've prepared in a sense that allows my athletic abilities to do what they can do. I'm trying to get the playbook down and everything. And I know like, I can't really like play like how I want to play because I'm still trying to, and obviously it's a process. It's not like mad about it or anything. I'm going to get there eventually. But, um, like at Notre Dame, like once I had the playbook, everything, like I was in a flow, like kind of, like I said, like a mini vet, like going into a game and knowing exactly what to do, what everybody on the field is doing. At that point, when the ball snap, you can just be Kyle at that point. And I feel like that gives me confidence. Like, once I get to that level and just move how I want to, like, I don't think there's really anybody who can perform like I can. Kyle, thank Marlin. you for your time. I appreciate you sir. having me on. Thank you. First round pick club. Do you feel like, you know, you we had two? Yeah. You would have been the you know, kind of been the star, but now it kind of got split. Like, yeah, I was like, just me, you know what I mean? They they wouldn't have yeah, done that to me. Yeah, they wouldn't have yeah. shared my first round, you know, <laughs> attention. Like, you're in the club, but like, do you feel Am so good really? about that? Um, like, honestly, no. I'm kind of great for it. Tyler okay. gets deflected. Some okay, of good. Stuff too, go. So I'm go. just good, good. doing my own thing. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. cool. <laughs>